We've been doing a book of the Bible, and I felt it's been quite good to do that Bible study across all our campuses. Pastor Dean did Daniel with you, uh, one of the chapters, and it was very inspiring. And uh, I felt that we need to go into a season of inspiration because people need their hearts lifted and their minds inspired. And I don't know if you know my personal mission statement. I haven't shared this for a number of uh, years with people. Some people new to the church wouldn't know. But my personal mission statement as an individual is simply this. To preach and teach so as to inspire faith and breakthrough. When I preach and teach, it doesn't mean you're going to have a breakthrough in the meeting. But you won't have a breakthrough here. But I do want to inspire faith. And I find that if you preach or teach and people don't get faith to believe God for more or they don't get a breakthrough in their thinking, what is the point of what we're doing? And I want to inspire you this morning with faith and breakthrough. Martin Seligman, a professor of psychology, uh, he is from the University of Pennsylvania, and they did some research at a major uh, life insurance company and they analyzed the salespeople who did better than other salespeople. And he found this out from this research that the salespeople, listen to this, who expected to succeed sold 37% more insurance than those who didn't. Just the fact that they expected to succeed caused them to succeed 37% more than other people. Expectation is a very powerful thing. In fact, Brian Tracy in his book, Maximum Achievement, he talks about expectation. This is apart from God, just, just when you've got expectation without the Lord. Imagine with the Lord. But he says this, positive expectations are the mark of a superior personality. Just keep that up for a moment. Think about that. Expectations are a mark of the superior person. If that's true of an unsaved person who doesn't know Jesus, what about us who are living in the kingdom? When we have expectations based on God, we should be living at another level. And when you've got expectation, something happens in you. You know, what, you know what we've been living? We've been living expecting the worst. We had the first wave. Then they told us, you must expect the second. Then they told us to expect the third. Wait, they told us to expect the fourth and even the fifth. And scientists are now telling us to expect another pandemic in 2023. So you live expecting the worst, not expecting the best. We've got to start living with the power of expectation. G.K. Chesterton said this. He said there's one thing that gives radiance to everything. It's the idea of something just around the corner. When you believe that something better is up ahead, it gives radiance to your life. It gives joy to your spirit. It's called the power of expectation. And I want to speak to you this morning about the power of expectation. I've taught on this before many years ago. I've taught on it just recently. But I feel the Holy Spirit, before I went away, emphasize that this is a theme that I need to bring through our church. It's a cousin of faith. Did you know that? Expectation and faith are like cousins. They go together and they are closely linked. C.S. Lewis said this. He said, true faith is never found alone. It is accompanied by expectation. You can't have faith and not have expectation. They are like cousins. And people with true faith are expecting something better from God. We've got to be careful that we don't become Christian realists. We need to look at life and leaders need to deal with reality, but we've got to be people of faith. And we've got to constantly look beyond the circumstances and believe God for what he wants to do. We've got to cultivate it because life's disappointments, life's hurts, COVID, negativity, loss. People have lost loved ones in this church. This can all lead to our decreased expectation in our lives. And we get into survival mode and uh, we don't expect anything from God anymore as long as we can get through. But God says, now raise the level. Of your expectation. A couple of verses here, Psalm 5 and verse 3, the psalmist says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you. He doesn't just pray, he says, and wait expectantly. Don't just pray, pray expecting, looking. When's it coming? When's it coming? Okay, it's delayed, but it's coming. So you don't just pray, well, you never know what God will do. You pray and then you expect. 
Psalm 62 and verse 5, my soul, wait thou upon God, for my expectation is from Him. We don't wait passively. Oh, well, I wonder when God's going to do something. We just wait and see. Maybe revival will break out. No, we wait with expectation, expecting it to happen. Even in this meeting today, if you're expectant, you could be healed. If you're expectant, something could change. If you're an addicted person in the area of sexuality or drugs or alcohol or some kind of bondage in your life, if you expect every time you come to church, maybe today, God will do it. You don't just pray, you expect. (laughs) Psalm 34 and verse 10. Notice this. The lions may grow weak and hungry. Lions are on the prowl, expecting prey. And the Bible says here, they'll go weak and hungry. But watch this. But those that seek the Lord lack no good thing. When we seek God and have an expectation that just around the corner, there's going to be a breakthrough. There's going to be food. There's going to be abundance. There's going to be a deal that we really need to keep our company going or a breakthrough in our department. Even lions who are on the prowl don't get it. We get it. Because expectation is a powerful thing. You know, one of the things the prodigal did, which should be a lesson to us, is he expected the world to be better than the church. He left his father, who, by the way, his father was incredible. He left his father, and the reason I say his father was incredible is because if you ask your parents for the inheritance before the time, they'll say, can you not wait until I'm dead? But his father gave him his inheritance before the time. That's how good he was. And then when his son left, he waited looking for him to come back. The prodigal's expectation was outside the kingdom. Is your expectation outside the kingdom? Are you expecting the political system to be your source? Are you expecting the world system? Are you looking for an unsaved person to marry because you can't find someone in the church? Or are you expecting God to bless you as you're in the house? Are you expecting the goodness of the Father in your life? He had to go and find out and end up with the pigs. Then he came back to his father. And we need to expect from God. And uh, when there's no expectation, there'll be no progress, there'll be no blessing, and there'll be no increase. Three attitudes that I want to remind you of. I spoke about this at Vision 2021, but I feel it's important. And I want you to assess yourself today. Ask yourself, where am I at? Three attitudes that everyone in this room has got. Number one is apathy. After COVID, people have got apathy. Indifferent, passionless, lazy, disappointed, hurting. Because what we've been through has given us a, oh, we just have to wait and see. And we've ended up with an apathy. And uh, if we live expecting the worst, or we don't know what's up ahead, we can become apathetic and uh, unmotivated, and that's not a good place to be. Don't raise your hand, but you could be there this morning. I want to ask you honestly, if that's you, you need to move on. You need to move on. A.B. Simpson, the Canadian pastor and missionary, he said, our God has boundless resources. The only limit is in us. Our asking, our thinking, our praying are too small. Our expectations are too limited. If you're not receiving from God, it's not because of the economy, it's not because of COVID, it's because you have brought everything down to a certain level where now you're just like, oh well. Who knows? But wait, it gets worse. Number two, the second attitude that many people have got is apprehension. Apprehension is not just apathy, it's fear. It's fear of the sixth wave or the next pandemic. Hmm? Dread, worry, uncertainty, and concern. You never know. And we've got to be very careful because in Luke 21, Jesus said this. He said, people will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. Are you in apathy or are you in apprehension? I believe a lot of people are stuck in apprehension. But what we've got to do is we've got to get to number three. There's some in the room, but not enough. We need to get to number three, expectation. We're not paralyzed, we're not fearful, we're expecting something incredible and we're believing God to do it anytime now. I'm expecting these seats to fill up. It's currently school holidays, it's currently uh, people a long weekend and when I came home from a busy summer holiday overseas, I was like, where's everybody? We were in Woolworths yesterday and there was like two people. I was like, should we be here alone? 
There was a guy standing with his arms folded outside the wine. I was like, people are stealing. There's no one around. I'm expecting business to do well. I'm expecting church to do well. I'm expecting this balcony to be so full that uh, the praises of God can be heard next door. We've got to believe and expect and not settle for what is. So are you apathetic? Are you apprehensive? Or are you living in expectation? It takes a decision. And I want to give you five things today that will help you because we, we can get into such unbelief. We can get into such apathy, into such apprehension that we stop expecting God to do what he wants to do. F.B. Meyer was an amazing man. He was a, a British theologian and preacher. And he said this. He said, unbelief puts our circumstances between us and God. Faith puts God between us and our circumstances. Don't you love that? We need to let God be between us and our circumstances and not let the circumstances be between us and God so that he's kind of shut out. We need to have expectation and we need to stir our expectation. It's a powerful powerful thing. You know, King David lived in expectation, and I don't have time to read all the verses this morning, because I really want to inspire you more than instruct you today. But I want you to remember this. David lived in expectation, not because he was a perfect man. I'm doing so well. My life's in order. I can expect God to bless me. You know what he lived in? He lived in the fact that even though he was making mistakes, that when he repented, God would bless him. Read Psalm 51. Do you know what he did? David not only took another man's wife, he took another man's life. Have you done that? I doubt the people in this room have done that. But here's the thing. Despite that, he repented and he expected good things from God. And if you read Psalm 71, he's living in that expectation all the time. And we need to expect God to do great things. You know, the great people who've done great things in the world did them because they had great expectation. Before I give you the things this morning, William Carey, many of you have heard about him, and some of you young people, you hear these names and you think, they're old guys with white hair. Here's one. These guys did things that we, need, that we mustn't forget. It's like the veterans of World War II. Don't forget about them. These people paid a price for the peace that many people now despise. And William Carey was a great missionary to India. He, uh, in 1800, he baptized his first convert, a man called Krishna Pal, who became an evangelist, who then, that just one convert triggered a whole lot of people getting saved. And just in a short space of time, 20 years, he ended up with 1,407 converts in India, a place that had never been exposed to the gospel. He translated the Bible into Bengali and into other uh, 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 dialects. And uh, he was a campaigner for, for lifting up women. He was the one that promoted the, uh, the, the, the equality of women. And they would not be burnt on those funeral pyres. Some of you may remember I spoke about that. When a, man, when a woman's husband died in India, she would have to go and sit on his funeral pyre while it was burning because she was of no use to society now that her husband was gone. He fought for that. He was a man who changed things, saw people converted. But you know what? It's because of his expectation. He expected the world. He expected people to get saved. Even when he went into India, steeped in, in, in all kinds of beliefs. And he said this. He said, ask great things of God. Expect great things from God. People who have expectation accomplish great things. Let me give you five ways that you can power up your expectation today. Let me remind you, number one, that our expectations become our reality. What you expect is how you will live. What you believe in your life, it will be manifest in your life. If you believe God is a punisher and he wants to hurt you, that's what you'll see at every turn. But if you believe God is good and he's forgiven you and he actually wants to bless you and grow you beyond your sin and your weaknesses, that's what you'll discover in your life. It's what you expect. Expectations are powerful and they create a reality. You remember the parable in Matthew 25, if you're making notes this morning, there were three men who were given three lots of gifts. One was given five talents, one was given two talents, one was given one talent. Do you remember that? And the one who had five made five more. You can double what God's given you. You think you've got no hope, uh, you know, if we get a better political party, then maybe my, no, no, stop looking to the wrong source. Stay in the Father's house and look at the gifts he's given you and expect them to double. The guy that was given two, he may have complained, or he was given five, but he could double his two. 
But here's the thing. The guy had one buried in the ground. You know why? He expected God to punish him. I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow. So I hid it in the ground. His expectation became his reality because what God did is he took away the one talent from him and gave it to the guy who had five. Even what he has will be taken away from him. If you don't use and believe God, your faith begins to erode. You know that? The little you've got begins to go. If you don't use your talents and abilities, they begin to go. What you expect becomes your reality. And here's the thing, what people do in the world today, and you've got to be careful of this, is they constantly complain about people who have got five and they turn it into ten. Inequality. Capitalism. Listen, we live under the rules of the kingdom, not popular opinion on social media. Don't despise people who are improving their lives under God because of their faith and expectation. Why would you point fingers at them? Take what you've got and follow them and let your expectation determine your reality. I want to remind you that we live by kingdom principles, not worldly principles. And they can sometimes look similar. Because unsafe people can be kind. They can also be generous at times. They can also do good works. But we live by a very different standard, the standard of the kingdom. And you need to remember that and operate. And uh, your expectation will govern your return. I want to remind you that the guy who had five talents and made five more, he wasn't given detailed instructions. The master didn't say, I want you to do this with it, and I don't want you to do that with it, and then I want you to do this with it, and so follow my instructions. He just said, here's five, make it more. What are you expecting in your life, your marriage, your family? Here's your marriage, make it more. Oh, well, you don't know who I'm married to. (laughs) Have you met my husband? Gosh, we need to expect that things can get better. And talking about marriage... Pastor Wilma got up here earlier and said that my young husband, in a couple of days, babe, in September, you will be the same age as me. No, you'll be older. You're currently the same age. Sorry, you're currently the same age as me. That's right. In a couple of days, you will be older than me. Currently, I'm not your young husband. I've got to correct you there. Can't have wrong doctrine in the house. She's nine months older than me, and does she let me know? (laughs) Anyone married to an older woman? Uh, Trouble cometh. Father, I pray. (laughs) Expectation. Hmm? You've got to believe that your marriage can get better, your business can get better, this country can get better. And listen, no matter what happens to the country, you've got to believe your life will rise up anyway. Are we, are we living under, under the king and the kingdom or are we living under a political system only? No, there are two kingdoms and they side by side and I choose to live under God's blessing and I expect from the king what government can't give me. Hmm? I believe that South Africa is still a place of opportunity for those who are previously disadvantaged. It's just that they don't expect anything anymore because all we look at is the news instead of looking to God. You had an opportunity to clap and you didn't. Listen, are you expecting judgment or are you expecting reward? The guy with one talent expected judgment, but actually reward was up ahead. And God is a rewarder. We need to believe for heaven's best. And our expectations always become our reality. Jesse Duplantis uh, has grown a great ministry. I don't agree with everything maybe that he teaches or preaches. And uh, he wrote a book called I Never Learned to Doubt. And in the book, he says anybody can live a boring, faithless, low expectation life. But God has called you to be braver than that. Always remember that as a believer, listen, you will do more and have more from God if you first believe more. Because your reality comes from your expectation. He says if you believe less, then you'll do and have Less two. The principle of the kingdom is that we believe God and that we expect the best from him. Number two, expectation releases the blessing and power of God. You wonder why there's not much in your life? Maybe your expectation is not fine-tuned. You've got like a dulled apathy or an apprehension, but you haven't kept your expectation in good condition. 
And expectation is a key thing in our lives. I, I, I want to remind you that when Jesus came to this planet, John the Baptist was the forerunner. You all remember that? And do you know the Bible says in Luke chapter 3 that when John went around preaching, the people were in expectation. They had had 400 years of not hearing anything from God. So when John appears on the scene, they think he's the Messiah. That's why he had to say to them, I'm not him. There's one coming after me. I'm not worthy to tie his sandals. Why did he say that? Because there was such an expectancy that when he appeared, it was, it's him, it's him. No, no, it's not me. He's coming. Just hang on. And expectation will always bring God into the picture. Anna was there expecting Jesus to turn up in the temple. So was Simeon, the Bible says in Luke. And they were waiting. When Simeon had seen Jesus, he's like, now I'm ready to go home, Lord. Because I've been expecting this man. And there was an expectation which opened the way for preaching. And God always shows up and works when there's expectation. You want him to appear in a meeting? Let the people start worshiping with expectation. He won't fail. It's like, he won't fail. He might. No, he won't. You've got to stir your expectation because that's when God moves. Can you say amen? You see, Hebrews, it, it t teaches us that faith and expectation are like cousins. You all know these verses. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Watch this. Because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I want you to say he exists. He, he rewards. He say it again. He exists. He, exists. he rewards. He Those two go together. Don't just believe he exists. Oh, there's a God up there, but you never know. No, he exists. He rewards. Amen. And we, if we have that, we'll have an expectation that God's going to do something. And when you have that, it's, it's the precursor to the power of God and to the blessing of God being released. You'll remember the lame man in the book of Acts, chapter 3, who they brought daily to lay at the gate. He had an expectation, and I want to read it here because I think it'll help us this morning. Acts chapter 3, it says, And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate, notice this, of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple same old every day same old expectation he expects arms using a translation that uses arms because i want to tell you something this man expected arms but he got legs and god will always give you more than you expect if your expectation is genuine and it goes on to say, yeah, Peter and John were about to go into the temple. He asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, and as did John. And they said, look at us. Why did they say, look at us? Because, let just put your hand out. Just lie there. Some Christians are like, just lie there. Apathy. Well, you never know. Oh. No, no, we need to be like. See, it wasn't good enough to sit there with a hat. He said, look at us. And as he looked. Something happened here. And uh, uh, he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, and what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And he went walking and leaping and praising God into the temple. This man was expecting something. Listen to me. But he got everything. He expected something, but he got everything. He expected a little bit of help. Instead, he got ability. He could now stand up and his whole life was changed. He could be social. He could interact. He could be generous. He could work. He expected something, but he got everything. Do you know that expectation will unlock the blessing in your life? But you've got to cultivate it. When it operates, it's a powerful thing. And it's a cousin to faith my experience of God and our experience of God in the ministry is that God has always done more than we expected you know when we came to this church next door I expected God after a couple of months he asked I think the Lord can do something through us I think it's the right season this is a big city maybe maybe God will give us a thousand people do you know that just before COVID we had 14 and 15,000 in in church on our five campuses every weekend. 
When you had sisters, it was 1,000, 1,200. It would go up to 15,000. We've got currently across our campuses 9,000 people in church, but I'm expecting God to do more than we believe for. And expectation unlocks the blessing, and when you have expectation, I tell you what, God will give you more than you believe. Number three, is this helping anyone? True expectation is accompanied by confession. It's not a quiet thing in your head. Mm. Now you've got to talk about it. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She went on her hands and knees and reached out for Jesus. If you're making notes this morning, we won't read it. It's Matthew chapter 9. And it says this, she said to herself, if I but touch his garment, I can be made well. So she expected, but she also said, now, what does that mean for you and I? I believe what it means is when you come into church, you've got to start shaping your mouth with the songs we sing. Don't view it as, oh, they'll, they'll still be singing. We can park slowly. No, no, no. That's the time where your expectation grows as you read those words and you do, my confession, I've had a bad week, but my confession lines up with that. He won't fail. He won't he won't. I've been feeling he might, but he won't. So your expectation rises. You expect God to speak to you. You expect the voice of the Lord. You, uh, don't come to church and say, uh, Diego, I don't know him. I don't like his face. I'm going to take the week. No. You've got to go, I don't know this man. I've never heard him before. But I'm sure Pastor Henry wouldn't have brought him unless he thought he could impart something to the church. And then you declare it. In our praise and worship, we need to declare what we believe. We need to say it in our conversation. We've got to expect the best. And I must confess to you that over the last three years, it's been incredibly hard to be positive. Because all we have is negative news, negative stuff about the church. What's happened with some of the big churches in the world has discouraged us. On the internet, there's negativity. I want my confession to be one of expectation. And one that better days are ahead, that we can get through this. And despite the fall of pastors and the decay of churches, there are those that can go ahead and can see the blessing of God. <laughs> Worship and prayer are the ways we can sing and declare our confidence and our expectation in God. Number four, quickly, expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. Do you expect miracles? Miracles are rare, but I must remind you, Jesus was a miracle and did miracles. Think about that. Hmm? He was a miracle. His birth and his resurrection were miracles. The son of God, God in the womb of a woman, and then the dead body raised up after being crucified. He was a miracle, but he did miracles. And the Bible attests to it numerous times. We don't have time this morning. You might want to scribble down uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. It talks about Jesus being attested by miracles, signs, and wonders. But John chapter 20, I want to read it to you because it says this. Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles besides the ones told about in this book. But these are recorded so that you might know history. No, so that you will believe that he's the Messiah, the Son of God, but it doesn't stop there. You don't just believe, watch this, and that by believing, you will have life. So you read about them, you believe them, and then you expect it for yourself. That's what we need to do. And by the way, Jesus didn't do miracles as some people teach, and then miracles ended. No, no, uh, and then some say, oh, no, they didn't end with Jesus, they ended with the 12 disciples. No, they didn't, because when you read the book of Acts, you find out that Philip went around doing miracles everywhere he went. So we must not be limited. I think miracles happen when you expect them. This building you're sitting in is a miracle. It is. You expect miracles and God will do them. And uh, when, 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 you have, when you have expectation, it's the breeding ground for miracles. Can I remind you that even Jesus, who did, did so many miracles that they're not all written down, couldn't do miracles in his hometown. Read it, Mark chapter 6. It says he there could not do anymore. It's not would not. He could not because of their unbelief. You know why? They had a low view of Jesus. Who's this oak? We've heard about him. He grew up here. How do we respond when we get a local speaker versus an overseas speaker? Oh, well, let's see what he's got. Expectation. I've noticed that when we have a black speaker here, the expectation rises. He's one of us. Come on. 
It's attitudes that you can control. Now, that's not wrong to relate to people. We all relate to people similar to us. It's, it's a good thing. It's the way it is. But we've got to have an expectation that goes beyond that. Because Jesus could not do miracles because people didn't esteem him. The Bible says they did not honor him because a prophet is without honor in his own town. If you expect God to speak, it's the breeding ground for miracles. Number five, our level of expectation determines our level of action. The greater our expectation, the greater will be our actions, our effort, and our drive to improve our lives. The less we expect, the less we will do. Are you with me? Think of the man with the one talent. Because he didn't expect anything good, he did nothing good. You, if, you go to, if you go to work and you don't expect to get ahead, listen to me. I work in a government department. I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. No, you've got to go there and despite your boss and the government department and corruption and bribery and nepotism, you live under the kingdom. And I don't expect from them anything. My expectation is of him. And the more you expect from God, guess what? The more you will work and do, because you won't be looking at the wrong thing. You won't be like the prodigal taking your eyes off the father and expecting from the world. Now your expectation needs to be from the father. And when your expectation is high, you'll start doing things, you'll start working, and you'll get past the discouragements and the disappointments of these last two years. Because now I'm going to work, I'm going to grow our church, we're going to grow our business, and we're going to move forward. I don't know if you remember me telling you the story, but John Maxwell talks about it in one of his books. He says that they were going to build a hydroelectric dam where there were farms and a particular town was situated there in a valley. And they decided that we're going to flood that area, pay everyone out, and they were going to build this dam. And he said an amazing thing happened from the time those people were paid out and the dam was going to be constructed. No one mowed their lawn, no one painted their house, no one fixed the roof. The entire place became a complete ruin. And he says this, and I want to remind you of it because this is true of your life. You won't take action unless you have expectation. And he says this, where there's no hope in the future, there's no power in the present. When you don't expect something to be better, it will lead to apathy, apprehension, rather than expectation. But when you've got expectation, you can believe that the future is going to be better, that God's going to free you from your hang-ups, your breakthrough is going to come, your hurts are going to be healed, your marriage is going to be restored, your business is going to progress, there's going to be an improvement in our country, that there's going to be breakthrough. Eventually, they'll come up with an electricity idea or little businesses will all grow and we'll have solar and we'll imp But the better days have got to come. And I love what it says in the message translation, Romans chapter 8. A message, sorry, paraphrase. I keep saying the paraphrase because it's not a translation. It's not a message Bible. Did you know that? It's a paraphrase. It's someone's opinion of what the Bible says, but sometimes it's good. He says, I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. Do you believe that? The present hard times are nothing. And the past bad times are nothing compared to what's coming. Someone put it like this, and I love this. The pain you've been feeling cannot compare to the joy that's coming. Amen. You know what? We need to expect the best from God. And we need to stir our expectation. And we could be like Christians sometimes who have got scales on our eyes. The hardship has almost like caked us so that we become blind. Do you remember in Acts chapter 9? I'm going to pray with you in a moment. Acts chapter 9. Paul gets saved. Do you all remember that? He sees Jesus on the road to Damascus. He falls on the ground and he's blinded. And then Ananias has to pray for him. Ananias goes to him and he prays for him. And he says this, brother Saul. God has sent me to pray for you. So he's saved because he's called a brother. And the Bible says, as he prayed for him, something like scales fell off his eyes and he could see again. You can be born again, but from all the hardship, wrong thinking, you can end up with scales. And what God wants to do in this meeting today is he wants to take the scales from our eyes. He wants us to see the future. He wants us to go from apathy, away from apathy, away from apprehension into the power of expectation where we believe, you know what, it can happen. 
and God can do it and the country can get better and my life can get better and I can double my potential and I can get the breakthrough. Come on, do you believe me this morning? Stand up with me, I wanna pray with you this morning. How many of you believe God for a breakthrough in your life? How many believe that things can change? Because we live under the kingdom. Hear me this morning. We do not live under the system of this world. We're in the world, but we're not of it. We have a different king and we have a different kingdom and they're different principles and they operate with faith and expectation. They're cousins. And when they twin together, power comes. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, I pray right now in this room, in the name of Jesus, that you would release people, that scales would fall from their eyes. Those of you in the room this morning, you feel that's you. Put your hand on your eyes. Put your hands on your eyes. Say, Lord, take the scales away from my spiritual eyes. Let something in this room right now this morning fall off in the name of Jesus. Let me see like you see. Let me see my marriage like you see it. Let me see my business like you see it. Let me see the country like you see it. Let me see my habits and addictions broken and me living in breakthrough like you see it. My past and my present are nothing, Lord, compared to my future. The pain of the past and COVID is nothing compared to the blessing that's coming up. I pray for a release this morning and a breakthrough right now. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.